Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Telepathy Bundle by Dreadbooks. So that was something of a white lie to get you in. Overall, I feel that the Telepathy Bundle couldn't be covered in just one single video. So in this first video, I just want to have a look at the telepathy module standalone. Just quickly do a run through, give you my thoughts, give you my recommendations. And then in follow up videos, I'm just going to uh, first cover psychosis, which is the other module uh, in the telepathy bundle. And then the third video will just cover the telepathy bundle overall, and that will also include a bit more of a deep dive into its MIDI capabilities. Why did I decide to look at telepathy on its own? Because I think that it merits that approach because this is again one of those modules in the chromatic series. It's 10 HP big and I think that this deserves a spot in each and every Eurorack case out there. So that being said, let me show you why I think that that's the case and um, I'll see you at the end again. Cheers. So here we've got telepathy in all of its dread books and goodness. So as mentioned, this is video one of three covering the overall telepathy bundle. First video, this one, I'm just going to have a look at telepathy in its standalone fashion. So I'm not going to uh, compare this when you're using it in combination with other telepathies. I'm not going to dive into its combination with psychosis. I'm not going to talk about its MIDI implementation. And I'm just going to take telepathy and measure it on its own account. So primarily driven by CV, uh, primarily in combination with other modules, whether they are uh, dreadbooks or others. Um, but before we dive into the module itself, uh, as you can see, I'm a big fan of dreadbooks and it's always a pleasure to work with them. So again, thanks so much dreadbooks for uh, allowing me to make this video. They call their modules the chromatic series. And if you look at the, the first eight that they've released, and I've got all eight of them uh, lined up right here, the one thing I always loved is the amount of literal color that they brought to my Eurorack systems and all of its incarnations. And the first thing I thought when I saw telepathy is, hey, but I'm missing a lot of color there. So is this still part of that but i do have to say that seeing these up close and personal for the first time i was really impressed because and i'm, I'm hoping the video does this justice is this is not just a black module no it, it's a very dark you might call it teal or uh um aqua green something like that very dark and then of course the the, the print here is uh, is a much lighter version of that so it's not a monochromatic module in that regard um, of course um, they would have made me really happy if this was in some sort of screaming color but given the intention that they had with telepathy which i'm going to talk about a bit later on i understand why they went with this specific color palette uh, but again, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have uh, been opposed to a very rainbow or a very colorful um, alternative front to this. But I like it. So again, um, in this case, I'm going to take telepathy on its own merits. Um, as mentioned, if you buy telepathy standalone, uh, you'll get, of course, everything you'll need. It's 10 HP. It'll come with. Um, MIDI cable, so that's essentially TRS, so stereo cables, uh, for you to connect it to other uh, MIDI TRS um, equipment. Keep in mind this is MIDI TRS A. That's always good to point out, and it does come with a 
uh, five pin MIDI to TRS A MIDI converter out of the box. So absolutely brilliant that they include that. Let's do a quick run through of what we see here. You've got your CV in. The beauty of this CV in is that you can map that to any of the parameters you'll have available to you. So that's very flexible. You've got your external in, so you can patch other audio into this and then maybe uh, use either the filters, the envelopes, the VCA, you name it. Um, to process that audio you've got your audio out with an attenuator which makes sense if you take the uh, psychosis into account but then again it also is very nice if you've got maybe limited mixing abilities and you just want to attenuate a bit of this output it does uh, say in the manual that it will clip and I think that that's mainly due to the limits of psychosis, because if you just patch this into um, another module that just takes on uh, from minus 10 to plus 10 uh, volts, it's not going to clip. So I think that that's mainly due to the psychosis. So if you've got other modules that you patch into this, I'll, and I'll show that later on on the scopes. Um, then you've got your buttons here, which you'll use to navigate the, well, pretty straightforward menu right here. It's not menu diving, but I do feel that it makes sense to keep the manual handy if you haven't really developed the muscle memory for working with this menu. So this is going to navigate you through the left-hand side, and this is going to navigate you through the right-hand side. So here you've got your LFO, VCO, VCF envelopes, and here you've got your save, load, CV in, and CC settings. Pretty straightforward. You've got your sliders, which you'll use to process all of your, um, your parameters, and you've got your analog in, pitch and gate and you've got your MIDI in and out again that's something that I'm going to cover when I'm going to do a full expose on the full telepathy bundle because I think that MIDI makes most sense if you take this bundle as a whole so that's that for just a quick overview so what is telepathy telepathy as Dread Books calls it is a full synth voice However, I feel that they are doing telepathy a bit of an injustice with that because if you were to ask me with my very limited knowledge what a full synth voice would be, I would say, okay, you'll you'll need an oscillator, you'll need a filter, you'll need to have an envelope and probably a VCA of sorts. But this adds more to that and it goes beyond that simple requirement. So let's start off with the very first page. Again, the red one here. This is the LFO. So the LFO is immediately out of the box, mappable to the uh, to the filter, to the filter cutoff, and to the uh, to the oscillator. So in, giving it a bit of a wobble or uh, a bit of a tremolo, however you want to call it. You'll then have control of the rate of the LFO and also the shape of the LFO, which also includes a random. So it already has that uh, that white noise based uh, sample and hold included there as well. So again, something that doesn't necessarily is always included in the synth voice. Again, I love that. Then if you go to the second page, you'll have your uh, frequency control, but keep in mind that this is an auto-tuned um, module, so you don't need to tune it. Every time you turn it off and turn it on, you'll get the exact same tuning again. Of course, with the alt modes, you are able to put this in uh, free tuning mode, so you'll still have full control of it if you want to get this in tune with some uh, lesser tuned modules. It does compensate for uh, for temperatures there as well. You'll have your uh, specific well wave shapes there. You'll have pitch uh, with sorry uh, uh, pulse with modulation, and again another nice addition. You've got a noise generator there too, with specific noise, well, shapes or colors, I should say. So that's again something I, I really love. 
then on the third you don't just have one filter you'll actually have two you'll have your low pass filter your high pass filter you'll have um the the self oscillation the the resonance there too you'll have the amount of uh influence the vcf envelope will have on the cutoff frequency and then on the on the fourth page you don't just have one envelope you actually have two and both will have control over the shape and the time and again all of the old modes maybe that's a good point so as you see me navigate through this but if you hold that button and you well move your parameters you have even more control over them and keep in mind that everything is of course if you do go into um uh, into midi you'll have full cc control over all of these as well um, again i'm not going to do a full expose run you through all of the options here i just want to do a very quick introduction to this give you my thoughts and i'll build upon those going forward so that being said let's um have a listen to the oscillators because this is of course something that dreadbox is really well known for is the the character of their oscillators so i'm just gonna patch this into the output and i'm gonna patch in a gate and a pitch and right here i'm gonna put the envelopes all the way down so they'll have a um a bit of a longer time to them so if i now ping this you already have that going for it so let me then go back to the filters put this there you go so this is unfiltered that's the control you've got saw wave a sub saw wave oh here we go to the the sub oscillator in its pitch form and all the way up you've got your pitch uh, sorry your pulse and this is pulse with modulatable and then you also have and this is the one you saw me pass through this is a combination of the pulse and the pulse sub and then of course you also have the noise that you can add to it again it does have that very specific dreadbook sound to it let's just keep it at the saw wave and let's do a couple of sweeps of the filters so have the the LFO patch to that as well so now I've got resins all the way down Add a bit of resonance to it, 50%. Again, I think that the character of that filter is just lovely. Just listen to this. Maybe add a bit of a lower resonance setting. Just lovely. 
Then let's uh, give the high pass filter a bit of a test. And as you might imagine, the resonance is only for the low pass. One thing to point out, as you can hear, is that putting it at full resonance, it will impact the volume. I love it. Then let's have a quick look at the envelopes. Um, I'm going to start with the VCA envelope. And as you saw me in, in at the start, I've got this set at the bottom and all the way up high there for the time. So the time is indeed the uh, the length of the envelope. So if you then go, you'll see that we'll have... Let me just change the scope here for a bit. If I change this to something that's a bit longer. And if I then change this to be a bit shorter. So this is a great example of what you'll then see. So this is indeed just me playing with that. So absolutely almost no attack. Just adding a bit of release to that. And you'll go into a bit higher. And what you'll see is that we're actually adding a bit of attack time to it. All the way to the top. All attack. No actual release. And of course, there are some alt modes here, so you can do a bit more with sustain and all of that. But this is essentially how the, the default envelopes work and if you then go into the let me just put this up and make sure that we put this in the top for the cutoff there so right now so now it's essentially having an open envelope for the VCA but you'll have a other envelope for the filter and which follows the exact same shapes. Maybe if I add a bit of resonance to it that you'll be able to hear it a bit better. And again. It's just nice. I, I, I love the immediacy that this uh, filter control has. But then, of course, there is a lot of the alt modes or the shift modes, that they, as they call it. it. It'll add a lot more flexibility to it. And I'll put all of those controls here on the screen so you can follow along back home. Um, but also have a look at the videos that Dreadbox released themselves, which is going to do a demo of all of these. And it's just lovely. So let me just then go into the LFO mode. So let me just go all the way here. So right now, oh, I might need to change the envelope a bit there. Um, and the filter. That's nice. And let's do something like that. A bit of resonance. So in the LFO mode, you can either send the LFO directly to the frequency or you can send it to the filter and you'll have more and more other capabilities there too. But let's start with just sending this to the uh, frequency. And let me just make sure that we can see this on the 
scope as well. There we go. And you can go all the way up. This is just a triangle wave LFO. So pulse. And this is the random that I talked about. And then just add that same LFO to the filter. Just for a bit of tremolo. What you do here now immediately is one of the key things that I'm always going to uh, change is that in the envelope, if you put it all the way down, you will hear, hear that click immediately. So always just put it a bit further there. Same thing for the fil for the filter one. I just I, I immediately get goosebumps whenever I try this with the telepathy so this is just a very immediate high level well walkthrough of what's possible with telepathy and I've only just scratched the surface I've not even shown you uh, what the tip of the iceberg is but once I did these things that I've just run you through which was almost a summary of my immediate initial um, reaction to telepathy when I first unboxed it and just play with it stand alone I think that you'll find that this is essentially much more than just hysteria ataxia uh, eudaimonia and some others combined this is a great addition on its own, on its own merit to the overall chromatic series by Dreadbooks. But that being said, this is a great addition to every Eurorack system. But again, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm going to share my um, initial thoughts and my my uh, thoughts after using this for a couple of months uh, later on in this video. But I hope that you found this useful, and I'm gonna release. I'm gonna be releasing a, a lot more content on this. So let's go back to the studio, and I'll talk to you in a bit. Cheers. So thanks so much for making it this far into the video. Um, I think you're all quite.
quite aware of what I think of this telepathy. I think that this is a genius module that Dreadbooks have released. Um, not that it replaces anything that they already have in their chromatic lineup, but it's a great addition. It offers tremendously more than some of their uh, other chromatic modules, but it also offers less. On the other hand, it's a very compact module. So if you're looking for an additional voice in your Eurorack system, if you need another baseline, if you need a lead, if you need something that can create um, uh, percussion sounds, I actually didn't really touch upon that in this video, but let's make sure that I do that in part three of this. This is probably one of those modules that are so versatile that you can't go wrong by adding this to your setup, adding this to your rack, adding this to your um, to your gig palette, to your uh, travel case, however you want to have it. This is something that's going to extend the applicability of your Eurorack system, whether you're using it in the studio, whether you're using it live. It's a great thing, and it still boasts that very recognizable Dreadbook sound as well. So um, I can't wait to start working on the next couple of videos. Uh, on the one hand, of course, uh, uh, covering psychosis, following that, the overall MIDI implementation, and how to combine psychosis with some of his brothers and sisters. And you can combine them I believe up to eight, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll confirm that in the uh, in the third video. I just fell in love with this. Even though it doesn't have as vibrant colors as its nephews in the Chromatic series. That being said, hope you liked this video. Hope you liked this new format of videos. If you've got any questions, any feedback, drop them down below and for now, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see each other very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.